So it finally happened. The clown world has its day in court. So, administratively speaking, what is a woman? That's the question that an Australian court will have to answer somewhere in the next three months. Let's explore. Hello everyone and welcome to the Freedom Alternative. Alrighty, so Tickle versus Giggle. <laughs> First time I uh, read about this case, I thought uh, that um, it has to be a joke, maybe some trolling by uh, a relatively elaborate scheme. But no, this is a very legitimate case uh, that is uh, legally known as Tickle versus Giggle. Um, now, the facts of the case uh, aren't particularly complicated. Nevertheless, I'll leave the details in the description for those who want uh, all of the autisms behind um, the court case. Uh, but long story short, Mr. Tickle is a dude who is firmly convinced that he's a woman. And Giggle is uh, an app, a former app, in fact, a former website that has been in the meantime shut down who was purportingly uh, a women-only online space. And Mr. Tickle joined that space uh, by uh, uploading a selfie and uh, uh, the women's um, very advanced AI said that it, Mr. Tickle is indeed a woman. <laughs> <laughs> and then a few months later, the CEO of that particular app, which is indeed called Giggle something, uh, noticed uh, noticed it and made the, the decision that actually Mr. Tickle is full of it and therefore kicked him out because, well, he's not a woman. So he did the sensible thing. He sued the company and the administrator, the CEO of the uh, website, of the app, whatever, and said, hold on a second, in the eyes of the law, Mr. Tickle is a woman, and therefore, you shouldn't have kicked him out. And um, the case made it to court, much to everyone's surprise, because initially, uh, the um, people who support uh, the lady that runs the, or used to run the application, said that, well, this is not going to make it to court, and uh, probably he'll settle, but lo and behold, he didn't settle, and uh, the case made it to court. The first uh, hearing has already taken place a few days ago, and um, unfortunately, in the first hearing, the, one of the decisions made was to uh, no longer broadcast the lawsuit, uh, the trial, live due to uh, online violence or whatever, which is quite unfortunate because this is the first case that I know of where the, in, the ideological underpinning underpinnings of the of gender ideology are being put to test uh, and the relatively ludicrous uh, piece of legislation that Australia has around quote-unquote gender expression is for the first time subjected to well court censure essentially right uh, judicial review as Americans would put it um, now the funny thing about this case is that for normal people, uh, that is to say for people who don't suffer from various uh, severe mental disorders, it doesn't even matter how the case ends. Whoever wins, <laughs> it's a win, um, either a short-term win or a longer-term win uh, for normal people. Think about it this way. If this guy wins, then that means um, the template can then be used to attack every single single-sex space um, until it becomes fashionable once again to discuss whether maybe, just maybe, uh, freedom of association matters more than the feelings of really anyone. Uh, if the mm, lady that runs the Giggle app, <laughs> if she manages to successfully defend herself, then that means not only she'll be making a lot of money, but it also means that the um, portion of the Australian legislation that relates to, quote-unquote, gender expression 
will in itself become, well, iffy. That would mean a, a court decision said that uh, at least that part of uh, the legislation is indeed uh, illegal and uh, should be subjected to further review by the legislature. Uh, if this guy settles um, before the conclusion of the trial, which I don't think it's going to happen because there was already a, such an offer and he refused it, but let's say he does, uh, then that creates a template for other people to milk, let's face it, women-only spaces uh, for money until it becomes fashionable again to discuss uh, the... Um, so to discuss freedom of association, very similarly to how lawyers used to use uh, the Unruh Act of 1954 to um, harass um, until they managed to shut them, shut them down, uh, the so-called Women in Tech uh, conferences, which were essentially a festival of misandry. So um, according to well, the civil rights era legislation, that's haram. Um, so no. Kind of in a very similar way, if this uh, uh, lawsuit turns out to be a template for that, it can be used uh, at the very least in um, Anglosphere um, countries, which, of course, are subjected to uh, common law type of uh, jurisprudence, uh, which functions quite different uh, than the civil law type of jurisprudence. Nevertheless, non-common law countries could uh, should take note of this kind of lawsuit as well, uh, even though the procedure might differ. Either way, um, it is a, a lawsuit that is absolutely fascinating, not only through the creative way that the both, both attorneys uh, have tried to make their case, but also because the uh, accused, the CEO of the Giggle <laughs> application, uh, doubled down on it, refused to apologize. Uh, she said that uh, she does not recognize the plaintiff as a woman and she refuses to use appropriate pronouns and doesn't quite give a damn uh, how much he's offended by it. Props to her. I mean, at the very least, uh, she's a um, consistent bigot. <laughs> um, and I say um, both in... Um, laughingly way but also in a serious way that she's a bigot because she's a misandrist so she's a bigot uh, but also laughingly because well from a progressive standpoint uh, she's also a bigot because she refuses to deny basic biology alongside her fellow progressives so in other uh, in both senses um, uh, she is a bigot nevertheless because um, she's the perfect um, um, candidate for being the um, pro-sex realism um, side, and also because Mr. Tickle is also the best case for um, anti-sex realism. I mean, this is the dude. <laughs> this is the dude that asks the court to recognize him as a woman. So you know, it's, it's all so funny. Now, to mention that since it's a discussion about an internet app, um, all of the arguments uh, that um, misandrists have... Um, put forward uh, regarding quote-unquote safety and so they're all very weak so you know, uh, I've heard some of the people who support uh, Mrs. Giggle uh, that while it would have been better if the lawsuit had been about a football squad or oh wouldn't you have loved it wouldn't you but no it is about an online space and because it is about an online space the vast majority of argument of the arguments that could have been credible in a court of law in other contexts are not credible in this context. So this will be fun. It's quite unfortunate that the trial is no longer um, uh, live streamed. Uh, so we'll just have to wait uh, for weeks on end until um, we see the results of it. But I do suggest to everyone to watch it, um, to uh, follow the uh, uh, trial and the maybe corresponding jur uh, jurisprudence with... Uh, well, yeah, relaxation, because it doesn't matter who wins, it's still a good thing, because it forces people to start thinking. And in the meantime, if you're discussing it with the normies, don't forget to always remind them, what if it had been a male-only space, right? Uh, because at the end of the day, the interest should be in the restoration of freedom of association. And since I'm wearing Cambodia apparel, um, I can assure you it was a co coincidence, um, that part of the world, Thailand and Cambodia in particular, but quite a few others in the region as well, um, 
they never had this conversation, still don't, even though um, they've been into this um, cross-sex impression thingy for much longer uh, than the West has. Uh, so, you know, how do they do it? Well, they're, they're all autocracies there. There's no such thing as democracy in Southeast Asia. Uh, how do they do it there? Well, it's simple. They had the category men, the category women, and the category others. Uh, now, in Thailand, uh, m most people are aware of the uh, Thai context where uh, you have uh, so-called ladyboys. Um, but it's not just um, Thailand, and it's not just that uh, application of it. In uh, Southeast Asia, it's just assumed, um, both in law and in practice, that there is such thing as a third category, and they're their own category. They don't get to um, infringe upon everyone else, and everyone else doesn't get to infringe too much upon them either. Uh, so I'm not saying the West should follow that model necessarily, although it could be quite good. But I am saying uh, that um, the West should start uh, being a little bit more honest with itself and also a little bit more honest about the fact that it doesn't have all of the answers and uh, maybe look around the rest of the planet and see how others are dealing with this. Could help in, at the very least, uh, bringing in... Uh, if not a solution, because there are no solutions, only trade-offs, but at the very least a more acceptable trade-off. And again, as long as that doesn't happen, and I don't think it will, I think it's going to take another 10 years at the very least until this uh, will be honestly discussed. Although lawsuits like this definitely helps, uh, they definitely help uh, to bring this issue closer to the mainstream. But until that happens, until we start having the conversation more honestly, um, it will have to be uh, reinforced um, and uh, said multiple times per day if necessary. The current trade-off is unacceptable. You can't perpetually uh, claim uh, to be oppressed and necessarily uh, be included in every single male-only space and then to be surprised Pikachu face when, well, men decide to do exactly the same thing to you. Um, we're either different or we're the same. And you have to make the decision. And if we are different, as I happen to believe, and increasingly more and more people are again realizing this, although they should have realized it since forever, welcome to biology. But, you know, if we are different, then that means we do need exclusionary spaces and time away from each other. If we are the same or similar enough, then we don't need exclusionary spaces, in which case your women-only website is inherently bigoted and therefore illegal pay up, you bigot. <laughs> your choice. But no, seriously, um, this case must be used um, alongside with other uh, <clears throat> examples and arguments that I have put forward um, in the previous video, I think, or two videos ago, whatever. Um, when it comes to uh, to this particular issue, you can't have uh, you can't have it both ways. And if you insist on having it both ways, well, um, there's always going to be someone who disagrees, and for good reason. So yeah, you know, there's that. All right, uh, enough uh, with this. Uh, I'll head back to the office because I got uh, videos on Turkmenistan to finish. Thank you all for watching. Cheers.